Hello everyone, my name is Andrea uh, and I'm one of the RASVMM maintainers. Today I will be talking about uh, RASVMM and what we've been doing in 2020, giving you an overview of uh, what's in the past, in the present, and also what we are looking uh, at in the future. So for those of you who don't know RASVMM, I will just quickly go through what RASVMM is. Um, RASVMM, it's a... Um, open source project that provides virtualization components um, that are written in Rust. So these components correspond to uh, Rust packages, which are also called crates. You can find more details about it in uh, the GitHub page in RustVMM community. RustVMM has been used in production since 2019, uh, and it was mostly used by uh, VMMs, virtual machine monitors. So uh, as examples, uh, we have Firecracker, Cloud Hypervisor, Alibaba Cloud Sandbox, and also Enax. An interesting shift that we've seen in 2020 uh, is that uh, besides VMMs, there are other applications that are using RustVMM in production, uh, such as libk run and Dragonfly container image service. Now, before I can actually talk about what is the state of RASVMM now, uh, let me just quickly go over how we are defining uh, several stages of these components uh, in RASVMM. So first of all, we have the empty crate, so empty components. Uh, these are the components that we agreed to have uh, as part of RASVMM, and it all started from one idea that was uh, submitted as a GitHub issue into the RASVMM community repository. In this, uh, in this GitHub issue, people are supposed to talk about the component and um, pretty, mu pretty much describing why is this component useful for the project and, um, and a short design uh, overview. After, uh, after the empty crate uh, is created, uh, we start the design discussions and we do not expect things to be perfect while the crate is in development. So um, people actually can uh, submit um, incomplete um, components uh, there, that they are not uh, feature complete or maybe don't have the full documentation or tests um, just to get uh, things started. Where we do have requirements for, uh, in terms of quality and documentation is before we are publishing these components on Crate.io. So uh, in order to publish a component to Crate.io from RASVMM, we are expecting to see a few things. So the most important thing is that we want all the crates to have the same quality bar. So uh, all, of, all of the crates need to be tested using the RASVMM CI. In terms, of, in terms of testing, uh, we are expecting a uh, line coverage of between 80 and 90%. At least this is what we've been having in the past, uh, in the craze that we already published. In terms of documentation, uh, one thing that is important and maybe special about the uh, RASVMM project is that uh, RASVMM is not providing an application. It's just providing essentially virtualization libraries. So you will need to write the documentation for the public interface as well as um, high level uh, design overview. Once all of these things are, uh, are done, uh, we are publishing the crate uh, on Crate.io and we are declaring it uh, essentially production ready. So now we can look at the component uh, status from, from this point of view. So uh, last year at KVM Forum, I presented this slide and I talked a bit of uh, what are the components that we published already and what are the components that are in development. So for the published ones, uh, there were mostly bindings. So that is uh, auto-generated code. And things have changed a bit uh, last, uh, since last year. First of all, uh, we have crates that have been moving from empty crates to actually being crates in development. One of them is vhost, where uh, uh, the effort was uh, mostly uh, done by people from um, IBM, Intel, and Alibaba. And then we also had crates that uh, became stale and uh, we had a few PRs there open, but nothing really happened. And we have to go and uh, go back and figure out what is with this component and how we can, um, how we can um, make it useful in the future. Then we also published a few components. So we published the uh, Linux loader and VM memory. So essentially these components are now uh, ready to be used in production. 
In terms of new development, we started working on a few new crates. Uh, one of them is uh, the host user backend, which again, uh, this uh, main, the main effort is uh, coming from uh, IBM and um, Intel Alibaba. Uh, and also VFIO IOCTOS, uh, which is the same uh, group of people uh, that are developing this component. Uh, Another interesting thing is the VMM reference. We've been talking about it quite a lot and now it's finally in development. Uh, the VMM reference implementation has two purposes. So one of them is to uh, be able to test the integration of Rust VMM components uh, directly in Rust VMM. So as part of Rust VMM instead of the products that are using Rust VMM. And the second purpose is to give people an overview or, of, or an example of how to glue together these Rust VMM components. Um, in 2020, we've also looked at uh, adding event manager, the event manager, which is providing um, abstractions for event-based applications, and also uh, VM, uh, Super IO, which is actually the first crate that we have um, that provides emulation. So this is the first crate published on Crate.io with emulation. So even though it's just legacy devices, we're pretty excited that we have the first code there. Um, we also invested some time in security and testing. Uh, one of the things uh, that we looked at is adding performance tests because previously we were only doing integration tests and unit tests. Uh, so for the performance tests, we added a pipeline for running the tests and also we added benchmarks in a few repositories. Now there is a catch um, because some of these benchmarks are actually taking a really long time to run. So uh, for some of them, we can run them as part of the continuous integration and on each uh, pull request, like for example, the event manager. But for others, uh, it actually takes quite a, ta quite a lot of time to run them, uh, like for example, via memory where the benchmarks uh, take more than one hour. So for, uh, for the VM memory use case, we need to find some uh, infrastructure and set up the infrastructure essentially to, to be able to uh, do nightly runs and report the results somehow. We also started investing more in the security aspect. So the first thing that we did uh, was to essentially do a code audit for the code that is already published on Crate.io. And uh, we were looking mostly at things like what is the input, what is the output, um, who is tr what are the ac trusted actors and what uh, are the untrusted actors. And based on this, we will also work on a threat model, uh, which is expected to come in the following weeks. Uh, as part of the code audit, we were actually able to find a few security vulnerabilities. So uh, they're both fixed um, and new versions are released. One of them is in via memory. Um, and the vulnerability uh, might lead to a denial of service. So essentially the bug in VM memory was that reads and writes were not atomic when we were expecting them to be. Uh, in VM Super IO, uh, the bug was uh, in the serial console emulation and uh, it could again lead to a denial of service uh, because we were allowing unbounded uh, memory to be allocated. For this one, uh, the uh, embargo just ended, so we have a CV ID allocation in progress. And, but if you want to know more about the details, uh, you can also see this on the on a public uh, GitHub issue. In terms of community, we were trying to see uh, how is the Rise VMM community doing. Um, for this, we used the GitHub APIs because it was the most accessible thing. Um, and unfortunately, GitHub only does code contributions. And uh, from um, like the the general uh, assumption is that uh, con contributions, code contributions are not all contributions. So we should be also looking at issues and discussions because we had people finding bugs in Rust VMM and participating at discussions. And this should count as contributions as well, but we, we didn't manage to capture them uh, in any way. Um, but uh, looking at the graph uh, on the right side, uh, we captured all the Rise VMM components and it looks like the uh, contributions pretty much stay uh, the same throughout the year. We do have a few spikes where uh, that correspond to uh, the time when we added new components to Rise VMM. Um, for contributing, uh, we also worked on making it easier to start contributing on Rust VMM. So we started adding the good first uh, issue label. And uh, actually, 
If you click on that link, it will take you to the GitHub page with all the issues in RAS VMM that are uh, good first issues. We also added the label uh, help wanted for people that want to contribute and uh, maybe it's not their first pull request. Um, and then if these two searches are still not good enough and you don't find something that is interesting, uh, there is also a search for issues that do not have an owner and you can search through those to see uh, issues that are not actively worked on. Uh, We're also encouraging people to start contributing and to ask us any question on uh, Rust uh, VMM channel, uh, the Slack channel, and also uh, uh, using our email address. Uh, in terms of future um, investments, we are uh, currently in a process of gathering feedback. We want to understand uh, if there are uh, areas of improvement that we should be looking at. So we are uh, basically asking contribu contributors to RASVMM, but also consumers of RASVMM to provide feedback. So if you have any feedback uh, on uh, these areas, you can uh, either send me an email or just uh, reach, uh, reach to us on Slack. That would be really, really helpful. Uh, we're also working on establishing a process for uh, reporting security vulnerabilities. In terms of visualization components, uh, we are mostly uh, working now on the host user backend. Um, for Vertio, we are starting with Vertio over MMIO. And again, in the following weeks, we are expecting to see a few PRs here uh, related to uh, block network and if time allows also VSOC. Uh, we are also working on vCPU abstractions, um, PCI, uh, VFIO, and uh, on the security side of things, fuzzing for, for emulation code. That was all I had. Uh, thank you, and uh, please reach out to me if you have any questions.